Hello, good afternoon. Um, today, today we're going to look at um, Derek Parfit's <coughs> um, classic article, Personal Identity, in the small Perry collection. Um, someone pointed out to me uh, last time that if you're doing the essay um, uh, on Parfit, well, the essay is due on Tuesday. Tuesday, is that right? So it's a little bit jammed up against um, when we're discussing Parfit in class. So um, the GSI suggested we might um, push it back to Thursday, the deadline for the essay. I can't see any downside to that from your point of view. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Can you put your hand up if you'd be in favor of moving the, the deadline back to Thursday? I see. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all prompts. Okay, that would uh, only, okay. So in that case, um, the essay is due on Thursday. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, um, well that was difficult, right? Uh, hello? <laughs> yes? Oh, I thought you put your hand up. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and next week class, next week class, <laughs> next week we'll carry on looking at the Parfit and uh, look a little bit at the Hume. We'll look a bit at the Hume today, but um, I'm not going to be presupposing that anyone's read it. Um, so to begin with, I want to look at um, Parfit's example of fission and just try and say what that is, fission. And uh, then um, he says that this has models for how we think about survival and uh, the um, our fear of death, how, what it tells you about the way that our concern with dying and survival is connected to the idea of the self. And in the second section, I'll try and give a deeper analysis of what is going on in his fission examples and then finally just try and ram home Parfit's main points once more. Here is an old Chinese proverb. How can we not fear death when from the moment of our birth it follows us like a murderer with ax upraised to slay us? Here's Rousseau. He who pretends to look on death without fear lies. Everyone's afraid of dying. This is the great law of sentient species, without which the entire human species would soon be destroyed. Um, when you think about being afraid of dying, uh, one thing that you can be afraid of is that uh, all your plans and projects are going to be left unfinished. The people who depend on you will be left unlooked after. Um, so there are lots of things about you dying um, that you might reasonably be appalled by. But there's a more primitive, a kind of visceral fear of dying that everyone has. I don't know <coughs> if you've ever had the experience of someone who really is, got, got, who has got a life-threatening illness. They really are facing the idea of their own death. And there's something about it. It's the fear of the light going out. It's as if they're just walking up to a dead cliff wall and there is nothing on the other side of it. Um, and that really doesn't have to do with uh, um, what's going to happen to other people or whether your novel will ever get finished or that kind of stuff. It's just death itself is just intrinsically terrifying. Death in itself is intrinsically scary. There's a kind of panic you can feel, uh, the idea of the end of the world, the end of your world, when the light just goes out. It's not that objectively things are going to be so very dreadful. I mean, after all, maybe your novel wasn't any good. Maybe nobody was depending on you anyway, and maybe everybody's going to be much happier <laughs> when, once they've moved on, right? 
even if you accept all that, the idea of you dying is still terrifying. And in the face of it, that concern with your own um, death, that concern with your own survival, that you want to make it, that's a concern that you should survive. It's a concern with identity. I mean, it really seems one of the most basic motivations humans have, as Rousseau said, um, you've got to have that motivation. Um, but what is it that you're concerned about when you say you want to survive? And how would you describe that, the concern with wanting to survive? Um, suppose you're told you've got a life-threatening illness, but there is an operation that might get you through. Um, so you're looking at the situation now and you're saying, am I going to make it to 2014? Then what you're asking about there is, here you are now. What you want to know is, in 2014, will there still be someone around who's identical with me? Right? That's, that's me, one and the same person. That's a fair way to put it. Um, so in 2014, if I can find, if, if, if you show me a picture of who's got, if the, if the um, soothsayer looks in the crystal ball and shows you the people who are around in 2014, and you can find one of them and say, that's me there, then you've survived. That's you making it. If you can't, then you haven't made it. That's the end of the world. That's the light going out. That, 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 that. So the concern to survive, can you spell it out? This is kind of laboring it out is you want there to be someone existing at a later time who's identical to you now, yeah? So personal identity, the identity of the self, is obviously a kind of important notion, but it really seems to be at the center of that concern to survive. But now, Parfit's point is this can't be right. This isn't the right way to think of it. Um, and he introduces the notion of fission cases um, fission cases, you can try and explain them using ami amoeba, 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 sometimes split into two, right? Well, just to give the idea of fission, let, let, let me try and demonstrate fission for you right now. Um, I have to do this in kind of two separate stages, but then you can imagine watching a movie where the two stages happen at once, right? So watch me very closely, right? Now I walk forwards. And I turn to the left, right? OK. Now, <laughs> watch it. <laughs> keep watching, right? I walk forwards, and I turn to the right, OK? Now, all you have to imagine is that I do these two things simultaneously, that as I walk forwards, two people step out, each of them molecularly very, very similar to me right, right now and very, very similar to each other, right? But two just walk out, yeah? Now, if I just do the turn to the left, then nobody says, you stopped existing, right? <laughs> Life would be much scarier than it actually is if, if you couldn't do that, right? If I turn to the right, nobody says, you stop existing. So all that's happening here is both are happening, both are going on simultaneously. So if only one of these people had existed, you'd have been happy to say that's the original person. Yeah, if the other branched, as it were, didn't take off. Um, so here's a diagram of the situation in, in uh, fission. In the trade, the two products of the fission are called lefty and righty for reasons <laughs> For technical reasons, we need not go into here, right? So here's you. Um, um, I mean, suppose your doctor tells you, you have a very rare condition. It doesn't happen very often, but sometime in the next few years, you will, there's a pretty good chance, fission. <laughs> then how are you to think about that? I mean, what's happened, what's happened to you? Are you lefty? Are you righty? Are you maybe both of them? Well, could you be both of them? 
You can't be both of them, right? Because they're two different people, lefty and righty. Yes? Yes? Half? No, no, no it's, not that <laughs> it's not that I've been cloven down the middle, right? Two full-blown people, each molecularly very similar to me, have stepped out. The human being, well, uh, I, I don't know what you mean. I mean, that's, that's, that's actually what, we're trying, what I'm trying to articulate. What, what has happened here? Is it the same person? That's right. Imagine each individual cell splitting. Yep, into two. Uh, one, two. Where what? Where are the original atoms? Well, um, I don't really have the technical vocabulary to explain exactly what's happened to the original atoms, but um, um, each of them has, there's been a kind of multiplication and splitting of each of the individual atoms. Yep. Each individual. That's right. And um, all the gaps have been filled in. Yeah, I don't. Re I can't really explain the process. Um, it's too advanced. But um, yeah, that's what's happened. So you said that the atoms end up in the end are all very similar. Yes, that's right. They are all very non similar. Non-identical. Well, I, I, I'm. C could they all be identical? Uh huh. It is like mitosis. Yes. Right. Right. Is it what the question is? Not are they very similar? The question is, is it one and the same? Yeah. Right. So, what is your hunch? Is, is uh, are both lefty and righty the same? One and the same is the original person. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I think that's true. So I guess right. If you look at it objectively, there are two different people there. Lefty is lefty the same person as righty? No, of course not. Right. I mean, they <laughs> as someone said to me the other day, they might have a deadly duel. Right. They can't be the same person. Yeah, they might have a fight. One of them might shout, and the other one might stamp. Yeah. So they've got to be different people. Um, if, <laughs> if they're both trying to get on the bus and the conductor says only room only for one more, they, they can't both get on. Yes? They're two different people. Yeah? Is it possible that left and right are just identical? Yeah, you, the, 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 that's, that's what you want, isn't it? Right? Um, lefty is identical to X and righty is identical to X, but lefty is not identical to righty. Yeah? yeah. The trouble is... Um, <laughs> That's a contradiction. Le if lefty is x and righty is x, then lefty is righty, right? That's kind of straightforward maths, yes. Um, so you can't have that, right? They can't, they can't, they can't be identical. They can't both be identical to x because if they were both identical to x, they'd be identical to each other. Yep. Uh, yep. Was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I, th th <laughs> that would work all right. But um, the trouble is, does lefty was X mean that lefty and X are one and the same? Yeah, okay. In that case, um, uh, we yeah. Goes yeah. Goes on, yeah. That's right. You can say, look, the, yeah. I, I agree. You, they, 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 they do have a specially close relationship, right? People say they have a close relationship with their children, but these are <laughs> these guys are very closely related, right? Um, uh, so you, you do want some special term for this particularly intimate relationship here, but they are different things, right? That's that's the basic point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there a difference in the property of the atoms? Pro what do you 
is that mean property? You mean who? Okay, that's fine. I, 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 I don't mind about that. I, I'm I really just want to get straight about who is identical to who. Right, there. That, okay, ju just give me that. They're not one and the same person. Yeah, let, let's hold on to that. Yeah. Um, oh, last one. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, l l let me put that on hold a minute. I, 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 I'm, I, I don't mean to, I, I, I'm perfectly serious. It's important that that doesn't make sense. I'll, I'll come back in a minute to, to it, okay? Um, so look, the, the first thing is uh, X can't be identical to both lefty and righty, right? Because they're two different people. If you're two different people, they can't both be identical to the same thing because then they're identical to each other, right? That's all right? That's rock solid? Okay. So then ask the question, well, could we say that X is identical to lefty? X made it. X is identical to someone, but it's lefty, not righty. Well, the trouble with that is that the situation is completely symmetrical. right? I tried to describe it in such a way that there's no basis for saying that one of them is identical to the original and the other one's just a branch. There's no the Lefty doesn't, isn't in any privileged relationship to the original person. Um, the righty isn't. And similarly, um, there's no basis for saying that uh, the original person's identical to righty rather than lefty. Okay? So the original person isn't identical to both of them. And the, the original person isn't identical to one rather than the other. Are you following me here? Yes? Okay. Um, so when you look at this situation, after this point, I mean, if this is time up here, after this time, is there anyone around who's identical to the original person? No, there's no one around who's identical to the original person. Um, so after the fusion, uh, the original person has ceased to exist. Right? That's what I meant about dying. Um, the original person is not there anymore. And you can't make a distinction between the situation in which the original person is not there anymore and the situation in which the original person has died. Right? That's the same thing, right? Not being around anymore and dying. Okay. You're just not there. But if you were told fission was about to happen to you, <coughs> would that be scary? Okay. <laughs> Suppose you're told it, w we understand what goes on here perfectly well. It's painless. Um, it's very well known. It's n n n no, you're, you're actually in no physical danger here. Yeah? Yeah, but when you're told you're about to fission, it's, it's not like the light is going to go out, right? It's not the end of the world. And you'll be seeing the world, well, where should I put this? The world will be being seen through twice as many eyes as before. Yeah. Isn't that great? I mean, shouldn't you rejoice? Yeah? So the thing about fission is if you're concerned about your own survival, you're told um, in 2014, by 2014, you will have fission. What that brings out is that you can have everything you want. No need to panic. No terror at the thought of the light going out, even although you don't exist anymore. So your own existence is not actually the key consideration. It seems to be. I began with these quotes that suggest your own identity is really just one of the fundamental human concerns. But when you think about this kind of case, what you realize is your own identity is not actually the key thing you care about. Your visceral concern is with something else, not with identity. So that's the basic point of a fission case. It's taking something that really seems to matter profoundly to each of us and saying that concern is not what you thought it was. It's not about identity. It's about something else. 
And then the task is to say, what is it? What is that other thing that you're concerned about here? So that's the basic idea of a prison case. Is that plain as day? Completely unmistakable? Survival does yeah, not equal personal identity. Yeah. Survival and personal identity are different yeah, things. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah. So Locke was wrong, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, th this example implies that sameness of human. Well, I don't know if this example does it. Does it? No, the, the example doesn't actually imply that sameness of person is different to sameness of human being, though it's natural to interpret that way. But, there you go. Uh, I, the, way I, I, the way I describe the prison case, right, turning left and right, it really doesn't matter whether it, the person goes as human being or not, whether people can swap bodies or not. Well, even if, even if uh, pe people just are human beings, you c they're still fissioning here. The human being is still fissioning, yeah? And the person is fissioning simultaneously. The, the thing in Locke that this is uh, contradicting is Locke said, personal identity is what we all care about. Personal identity is the foundation of all right and wrong. Um, when we want to survive, when people think, well, maybe we make it past physical death and into another life, um, what they're thinking is, I want it to be me in that other life. You know, if it can be me through the dissolution of the body, then that would be just great. That's what I want from survival. Locke thinks all that is correct. Yeah. Um, but do those ideas about what's important, about what matters, are what are being attacked here, is not identity that matters. It's something else. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to, th th this is to describe it at the most superficial level, at just what the example is. Um, and to try and give some analysis, some diagnosis of what's going on here. Um, there's a remark Leibniz made somewhere that he said, where there are complexes, there must be symbols. Okay, some objects are complex, right? Like this room, for example, is kind of complex. Um, but there must be simple objects. I mean, atoms are complex, right? You have um, protons and neutrons and elect uh, electrons, right? So what are, what are protons made of? Quarks? Okay. Yeah? Okay, what are quarks made of? They haven't broken it down yet. Okay. Well, the thing is, wh wh however it gets broken down, it's got to come to a stop somewhere. Right? At some point, there have to be simple objects. It can't be, as it were, quarks all the way down. Yeah? If there are complex objects, there must be simple objects. So what are the simple objects going to be? Well, you know, rough, I mean, the traditional um, candidates for simple objects were atoms, whatever the fundamental physical particles, or um, maybe their perceptions, maybe their mental, maybe the simple objects are sense data, or something like that. Or maybe it's people, maybe people are simple objects. Um, whenever you were a complex object, like an atom or the solar system, you can say, what are the principles by which all the constituent objects are being organized into the larger system, right? How do you put these components together to get a complex object? So you've got a complex object here like um, a widget. Then as you can see, this has got lots of components, right? And what this kind of exploded view does is it shows you how to assemble all the components into a single complex object. So. Are people simple or complex? Are you a simple object or a complex object? Complex. complex. Put up your hand if you think the answer is complex. <laughs> and if you think the answer is simple. 
Okay, <laughs> a small but significant um, vo vo proportion there for simple. Okay, um, but yeah, the overwhelming majority case uh, complex. Okay, well, Descartes, see, if you remember Descartes, we did this, right? It seems like a long time ago now. Um, the body is by its very nature always divisible, while the mind is utterly indivisible. And in the face of it, Descartes is saying there, the mind is simple. The mind has no components. Yeah, it is just a kind of blob of ectoplasm, r r right? Uh, so Descartes saying, the mind or the self has no parts from which it's composed. There, is, there are no components to the self, and there's nothing to say about the way components are put together, the way you get unity of the system. And Hume, in the um, selections in Perry, is trying to blow that up. Hume doesn't agree for a minute with the guys who, says that, who say the self is simple. Hume says, what are you talking about when you say the self is simple? Um, what is that thing? For my part, when I enter most intimately into what I call myself, when I look, I mean, you can try this now. Look inside your own mind. What is there in your own mind? Do you see the self? What do you get? You always come upon some particular thought that's going through your head, some feeling that you're having, some particular perception or other of heat or cold, light or shade, love or hatred, pain or pleasure. Right? That's all you get. What you never get when you look inside yourself, when you look inside your own mind, is the self. I never catch myself, myself at any time without a perception. And I never can observe anything but the perception. So if there is a self, the way Descartes thought there was a self, it's something you never see. You don't see it when you look inside your own mind. You don't see it when you look at your body. That's just another um, accompaniment of the soul. Um, and what would it be to look inside yourself and see your own essence, see which particular soul you are? Hume says, if any impression gave rise to the idea of the self, that impression must continue invariably the same through the whole course of our lives. Since, after all, through the whole course of your life, you were always around. You see what I mean, yeah? So it would have to be that when right now I say, think about what's going through your mind right now, when you looked inside your own mind, you always got the same person. You always looked and you said, oh, there I am again. You see what I mean? Like you just showed up, kind of like having tinnitus or something where you, you hear that, you, that note running through your entire psychological life. You look inside your mind and you say, oh, there I am. There it is, good old me, yet again. And Jim's point is that is just not what happens. Um, there is no such thing as the self over and above the body and strings of mental states related to that body. That's all the self can be. The self has got to be a complex object because we have no picture of, any, of, of what any simple object might be. There would be the self. The only thing we have any conception of are the body and strings of mental states associated with that body. And we have to think of the body as a kind of complex, or the, sorry, we have to think of the self as a complex of the body and those strings of mental states. Um, the self being whoever you are, whatever it is that you want to survive. Yeah? If I'm asking what is it that I want to survive, then one first question to ask, is it a simple object or is it a complex object? And what Hume's arguing, what I'm arguing is, it's a complex object. It's not a simple object. Um, and when you ask what the components of this complex object are, it's a body and a string of mental states related to that body. Yep. Fair enough. Do, do the guys who think the, soul, the self is simple want to protest at this point? Let me. No? Okay. Come back later. Okay. Um, Hume says, I cannot compare the soul more properly to anything than, I mean, he means the self, you, 
right? I cannot compare it more properly to anything than to a republic or commonwealth in which the several members are united by the reciprocal ties of government and subordination and give rise to other persons who propagate the same republic in the incessant changes of its parts. So here's Hobbes's picture of the, um, of the, the famous picture of Leviathan. The state, as actually you can't see this very well, but this is composed of lots of individual people. So the idea is the state is composed as a classic complex object. The state is composed of lots of individual citizens all interacting with one another, um, organized into subsystems, organized into groups that interact with one another. And the identity of the state is a matter of how those groups of individual people are organized. This says, Hume says, you should compare the mind to the state for a republic or commonwealth. You have all these individual components, all these thoughts, feelings, experiences, and the body, and they are all organized into systems. Um, they are all interacting with one another. The self is nothing but a bundle or collection of different perceptions which succeed each other with an inconceivable rapidity and are in perpetual flux or movement. So when you're thinking, I want to make it, I want to survive, I want to be here in 2014 or 2015 or whenever, you want to make it through, what you're concerned about there is the persistence of a bundle or collection of different perceptions. That's okay. So that's just analyzing what that concern to survive is. That's spelling it out. So here, the, the way Hume's putting it, the identity of the self is like the identity of a river. So you can think of a river as organized out of lots of particles uh, flowing upon one another. Um, I mean, we talk about the stream of consciousness, that whoosh, that torrent of feelings, thoughts, experiences, perceptions, and so on. And suppose you think about the identity of the river. Is the identity of a river an all or nothing process? And if you, if you ever get interested in waterways, it's actually often quite difficult to know when you've got the same river again. Suppose a river branches. Which branch is the same as the original river? Yeah, that's kind of hard to say. Yeah, If you just look at a map, it's very hard to just read off. Um, to tell just from the shapes of the river what path they take when you've got the same river again and when you haven't. When one splits off and goes to a dead end and the other branch carries on and then loops back round, when do you have the same river? It's very hard to answer these questions. Um, and with rivers, I mean, who cares, frankly? <laughs> right? I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can arbitrarily say what you like um, because the hard facts are the facts about the flux of all the water molecules. So the concern to survive is concern for the survival of a person. And if we think of a person as a complex object, then we ought to be able to give an exploded view of what a person is. I mean, I said we've got a picture. You, you can give a picture like this when you've got a complex object of what all the components are and how they're put together. So if you want this to survive, well, um, what is it that you're concerned about? That gives you an analysis of what you're concerned about if you want that thing to last. Um, so how would you specify the components of a person and how they're to be put together to make a thing? What are the components of a person? All you guys said to people, you were all, yeah, <laughs> all you guys wanted to be complex, right? If there are complexes, there must be simples. So what are the simples? Excellent. Yeah, that's, I, I agree. That's absolutely the natural starting point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Emotion, sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, just as with the state, you could say there are different kinds of systems here. They're all combined together to give you the same uh, one thing. 
physical components, yeah, the body, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the other, that kind of thing. Sure, yep. Sorry? Motivations, absolutely, yeah. Um, so you would expect those to be the components, yeah. There is one, that I, I strongly agree, that's a terrific list. Um, there is one puzzle here. Usually with a complex object, when you've got components, the components can exist independently of their being in the thing, right? I mean, you could take any one of those components out and it would still be fine, even if it wasn't organized into the thing. But with experiences, it's kind of different. Um, could, <laughs> could you have experiences that were existing outside the life of a person? I mean, you could take the spring here and put it on the shelf, right? Could you take one of your experiences extract it out of your life and just leave it hanging about somewhere. You see what I mean? We haven't assembled that one into a person yet. Yeah? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's one of the it is, it, I see, it's not, it's not part of the person right. until it's put into your memory. Okay. Yeah? What, what about your perception? Th that's a really interesting idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, but I mean, the perceptions you're having right now, don't they belong to you? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have to wait for you to remember them. I mean, if they weren't yours to start with, then you wouldn't know which ones you had to remember. If you see what I mean, yeah, because uh, I'm having perceptions, you're having perceptions, but if they're just kind of in a heap there, not owned by anyone, then how do I know which ones to remember? You know, it's only my own perceptions that I remember. Yeah, okay, but that, that, that's an interesting idea. Um, the, the great philosopher H.H. H. Price thought that, oh dear, um, thought that um, <laughs> there were actually, just as you can have, this kind of components lying around, right, in a, in a garage or something, you might have a bunch of parts lying around that haven't been assembled into a person, or as the last question I was suggesting, you know, perceptions that haven't been or, as, or integrated into a person yet. Um, Price thought that there were kind of orphan experiences floating around in the world, and that um, the great merit of, um, uh, what's the word I want? Um, mind expanding drugs was that um, the <laughs> sometimes those perceptions would then bump into you. Other people's, you know, unknown perceptions would be integrated into your own mental life. And that's when you got these strange parapsychological experiences, right? That was when one of these orphan perceptions bumped into your bundle of perceptions. But it's kind of a weird idea. I mean, it's hard, it's hard to know what to make of this, but the idea that I agree that experiences must, if, if people are complex and experiences have got to be one of the components, but they're a little bit puzzling because it's not obvious that they really have a lives of their own outside the life of the person that they belong to. Um, yeah? <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> I, I was merely quoting the views of the philosopher H.H. H. Price, right? I'm, I'm not making any recommendations to anyone. I'm particularly not, uh, b b because they I mentioned it because the idea is so daft. Um, that um, It's not that the experiences are not understood. The idea, his idea was the experiences are kind of bouncing around unowned by anyone. It's not your experience, it's not my experience. They're just in a heap. You see what I mean? It's not understanding. It's not understanding. They're not anyone's experiences. They're orphan experiences. They don't belong to anyone. It's not that they're not understood. <laughs> <laughs> that was the example, right? Um, that, was what, that was Price's suggestion. But what I'm saying is that's a very difficult idea, right? It probably doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, and if it doesn't make any sense, then the idea that experiences are components of the complex is a little bit puzzling. 
because the experiences don't exist outside the complex. And usually when you break down a complex object into simple objects, the simple objects are ones that can exist independently of the complex. The thing is, is the, the, the hard drive, there's a hard drive, there's the files, and then there's the thing that's doing the processing. The CPU. The CPU. Okay. Right. Data in the hard drive. Okay, but what, what is, what's the identity of the self? What's the analog for the identity of the self? If you say it's just the CPU, then it doesn't have memories as components. Yeah. Because um, uh, the CPU doesn't have data as components. Yeah. Uh, Okay, um, Hume says the true idea of the human mind is to consider it as a system of different perceptions or um, different existences which are linked together by the relation of cause and effect and mutually produce, destroy, influence, and modify each other. That's quite a powerful picture of what the person is. Yeah? So if you ask, what is a person? Then you've got components like a body and experiences. Uh, and th there was that much better list that people gave, motivations, emotions, um, and so on. Um, and the body with its limbs and organs and so on. And then you ask, how are all these experiences and that body organized? How do you put them together? And Hume's saying, it's by what causes what. Um, now, really, What's going on here is that we're doing the same thing we did in the last lecture from a slightly different angle. Um, last time I was saying memory is a causal relation between an earlier perception and a present perception. You've got your current impression of the window in your childhood bedroom or your current impression of what happened here last week. Um, and you had your perception then, your perception back then, and your perception back then causes the impression that you have right now. So that's part of what makes you hang together as a single person, that your past life is one of the big causes of your current mental life. Your past mental life is what's causing your current mental life. So if you ask, well, how can I give an exploded view of a person like that? Then it would be something like this, that you've got an earlier experience, you've got a later experience, You've got the body. Those are the components. And then you put them together by causation. The earlier experiences cause the later experiences, and the body is causally sustaining the whole lot. None of that would be happening without the body. Um, and in the central, wh what is Locke's right or the central cases? Perception and memory are really the clear examples here of the earlier perception causing the later memory. So that's like the exploded view of a person. Okay? That's the analog to that for a person. Fair enough? That's plain as day? Okay. So when you say, but will it be me? I want to make it. I want to survive. Then we can ask, what is it that you are so concerned about? What is the object that you're concerned about? And it's a complex object like this. Yeah? That's what you're concerned about. And you're concerned to survive. But once you get it that the self is a complex object like that, it's a good question whether um, what we care about in survival is really all or nothing. I mean, with a complex object, after all, I mean, if you took a comp oops, splash. If you took a complex object like this, and said, I really care about this. This is great sentimental value. I want this to continue to exist. Well, whether it makes it is not actually an all or nothing matter. I mean, some of these parts might be replaced by others. You might replace all of the parts by others. Um, you might replace just one, and there might be lots of intermediate cases. And you might change its function. You might change its structure. It might not be put together in just the same way. So there might be a clear case 
where you say this is definitely the same thing, a clear case where you say it is not the same thing, but lots of cases in between where you're not quite sure what to say and where your feelings about it are really um, intermediate, mixed, ambivalent. You're not dead sure if it is the same sentimental value for you that it used to. Um, so what we care about when we care about survival, when you care about your own future, that might not be an all or nothing matter. After all, maybe in 10 years, you'll have completely forgotten the person you are now. Maybe in 10 years, you'll be completely unlike the person you are now. Why should you care about that person? What? Because it's you. <laughs> but maybe that's not an all or nothing matter. Maybe it can be more or less you. If the self is really, a, well, what I mean is, your reply there is really powerful if you think that the self is a simple object. If you think, well, there's just this blob of ectoplasm, that's me, right? And what, is, what really matters is, is that there or not? But if, it's, if the self is a complex object, then it's not an all or nothing matter. It's a matter of degree. Have I got what I want here? Well, to some extent. Yeah, th 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 that's the first part way of putting it. But I mean to go one step further than that and say, what is it? What, <laughs> what is it that I care about? Yeah, here I've got an analysis of what I care about. This is giving an analysis of what you care about. So it's not that you care about the identity of any one of those components. Yeah, what you care about is the whole structure. What you care about is that these experiences in that body should keep propagating into the future. So a concern with an identity is really a concern with causal propagation. That was really the model of that thing about the table. Remember the thing about the table? The table annihilator and the table creator. Remember that? Yeah? Identity is causal connectedness from the past into the future. Yeah? So when you say, what I care about is, will it be me? What you're saying is, what I care about is, will there be causal propagation into the future? That's the same thing. Yeah? We're getting an analysis of what that is. It's causal propagation into the future. You want all these components to keep propagating. And the thing here is, that can be a matter of degree. I mean, what kind of causal propagation you care about might be different from person to person. I mean, this has come up in the class before. People said, look, suppose I'm a great athlete or a pianist or something, then what I care about propagating into the future might be um, something pretty physical. Or um, I might care about my kind and generous disposition or the memories I have. I want them to keep, to keep being held on into the future. But there are lots of different dimensions to this. And if what you care about in, in caring about identity is causal propagation into the future, then that can come in degrees and you can get more or less of it. So if people are complex objects, then what matters in personal identity need not be an all or nothing affair. You tend to, we tend to say, but will it be me? In the case of the prince and the cobbler, uh, Williams is saying, well, one of them is going to get tortured, one of them is going to get rewarded. And you say, but will it be me that's getting tortured or rewarded? Then that's talking as if the self was a simple object. But the self is a complex object. If the self is a complex object, then what we're talking about here is what's being causally propagated from me to that future person. Um, one body has been causally propagated from this body. Another set of experiences has been causally propagated from this set of experiences. And um, to what extent I'm getting what I want here, there might be to be a mixed answer there. It's not all or nothing. Putting it in terms of but will it be me is just too simple. OK, that's to look at um, what happens to the question, uh, but will I survive? Once you take on board the popular idea that the self is a complex object, 
is still keeping a simple all or nothing matter. Yeah? Is that perfectly straightforward? Okay. So, yeah? Exactly. You wouldn't fear death. You would not fear death. Um, if what you care about is causal, causally your current moods, feelings, experiences, memories, what you care about then is affecting what happens later. Well, you might get that to a very large extent, even through physical death. Yeah. I mean, if you have left your mark on a ton of people, then your the impacts of, of, of what you've done will keep going pretty much as if you'd been alive. So identity isn't important. What you really care about anyway, when you, when you naively put it, when one naively puts it by saying, I want it to be me that's still there. Yeah, that's not really what you care about. What you care about is this causal continuity. But you could have that even if you weren't there. Yeah. Um, so death should lose its sting. That's right, that's right, it really should. Yeah, having children should allow you to be a particularly easy way of allowing you to causally propagate your influence into the future. Yeah. You're going to have a big impact on them, yeah. And isn't that the truth? Yeah, that's, exactly that's exactly how it works, yeah. yeah. Yes, people with many children should be less afraid of death, yeah. And aren't they, isn't that in fact how it works? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can let us know, Jacob. <laughs> um, yeah, but exactly. You know, th that's exactly the picture here. Yeah. Okay. So we started out with that thing of that panic at the light going out, and then you analyze what is it that I'm scared of here? What is going on? And you take on board that the self is complex and that identity here is just earlier things affecting later things. And you say, well, that's what I'm so wi fired up about. And now you find, well, actually, there are lots of ways I can get that affecting the future bit. And it, identity is really not key here at all. Yeah. My own identity just drops out. Plain as day. So um, part of its thing about vision was the human divides into two separate people. Um, and if only one of them had taken, you'd have said, that's the same as the original person. Um, but, and I said, well, is that the light going out? But now you've got an analysis of, what's going, of what you care about when you care about the light going out. What you care about is that the, the string of experiences associated with this body should be affecting what happens later. But of course, you're getting that here. You're getting a lot of impact from what happened here on what happens later. So in this case, you're actually getting everything that you care about in ordinary survival. If you make it through to 2014, then you've got all this stuff down here, causally, if this is 2014 here, then you've got um, what happens here at the early stage causally affecting what happens there. That's what you care about when you say, I want to make it through to 2014. But actually, if you fission, you're going to have double the causal influence that you would usually have had, right? Because down this branch, you've got one river of emotions and thoughts and memories and so on all causally affected by what happened here. And down this branch, you've got another string of memories and so on, all causally affected by what happened down here. So is that as good as ordinary survival? It's better than ordinary survival. It's twice as good as ordinary survival. 
if you really care about your own survival, you should not just wealth, or, uh, not fear fission. You should want it. You should be pleading for it, right? Because um, you're going to have all you care about in ordinary survival, even though there's no one around then who's identical to you. That's not the important thing. It just doesn't matter that there should be um, uh, someone at the later time who's identical to you. In the fission case, um, what we've got is uh, a plethora of causal influence in the future. But that's all that the concern to survive is. I mean, we're, we're saying you can explain what a person is in terms of these components, the individual experiences, the emotions, the motivations, the body and its members, the body and its organs. And so we've got an analysis of what you care about um, in the when you want to survive. And so when you say, I want to survive, I want to make it, what you're saying is, I want that the stream of experiences causally related to these current experiences and this body should be as prolonged and rich as possible. Yeah? If you say, I want to live a long life, I want to have a long, happy life, then that's what you're asking for. A, a, resu a string of experiences in the future that are prolonged, that are rich, and that are all causally connected to your current string of experiences. Yeah? That's fair enough. That's, that's just a laborious way of saying what you want in survival. But after ordinary death, um, you don't get that. Usually when you die, that string of experiences just comes to a halt, yeah? Unless you've managed to influence people around you. But um, after fission, you get far more experiences causally related to your current experiences and to this body. So fission is far better than ordinary survival, even though you no longer exist. It's not just that you ought not to fear it. It's the best thing that can happen. Yes? You don't exist. I don't know what the rest of it means, but you don't exist. Yeah. That's a key thing. You stopped existing. But nonetheless, this is wa a wonderful scenario. E be as selfish as you like. This is the best scenario you could, you could hope for, even though you don't exist anymore. Yep. Yes, sir. The sudden stop, yes, right. That's right, there's no sudden stop, yeah. That's right. So what's, to, what's not to like, right? Because usually what happens in ordinary death is this is causally affecting that and that is causally affecting that and that is causally affecting that. And then there's a hiatus where this stops causally affecting stuff later. But here you have double the usual effect without identity. Um, so that's great. Can you put your hand up if you go for fission? I mean, if I said, given the choice, okay. Uh, yeah, you know, we, we actually have here a, a small booth outside. <laughs> would you go for it? Can you put your hand up if you would? And if you wouldn't? Whoa. <laughs> well, I've done the best I can for fission. I mean, what's wrong with it? What, what's not to like? Yes. With, with, with a river. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, okay. Um, you, so I, just, <laughs> I was going to say the river could be the thing that I'm going to. That's right. Is that something that's going to be 
Yeah, that's right, right. Yeah. So given that that's the case, like, would would we expect the same thing that we would get from the Internet that we would get outside and just the Internet that would happen in the same way in place of that? Uh, th I think that's right, yeah. Like, do you, do you think that every day, like, there was... Uh, there is renewal and replenishment in every life the whole time, right. yeah. Like all, all you're getting here is double the usual dose of re renewal and replenishment. That's right. Then, yeah. So, like, I feel like um, we need to think of a way for a migration to happen without it happening. That, I think that's exactly right. It, it is glorified, yeah, but, but it is a version of it. Um, and uh, uh, the point is, that's just great. <coughs> even though you no longer exist, even though there is nobody around who's identical to you. Um, so then you say that even if there was no experience in office that would yeah. allow you to affect the state of the mind of an individual. Yeah. No, it, well, you, in that case, you do exist. Yeah, there is one person all the way through. But that's so not the important thing. So I mean, why should we say that a piece of information is just like the same state as yeah. the state of the mind with <laughs> several different, like, networks of interest and then uh -huh. pretty much, like, one form acting for a set of Okay. Yes, I see what you mean. Yeah, uh, uh, th 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 that's right. I mean, it's still literally true to say that there's exactly one person here. Um, as you and I are talking, say there's just one person that's talking to you the whole way through. But um, although that's literally true, it's not as important as we tend to think it is. The identity of the self is not such an important notion because of the kind of thing you're saying, that the, all the identity of the self is is this causal continuation. And you're saying, but people affect each other the whole time. And that's right. And that weakens the importance of this notion that it's one and the same self. It weakens its importance. It's still literally true that there's just one person of the whole way through. Um, one question. I think in that case, we'd say you did still exist. But then, in what sort of circumstance would you want the person to be able to exist? Yeah, that was a kind of logical puzzle thing I, I set up at the start. There's no way of, of identifying the thing that is you in the future. It can't be right. one rather than the other. There are two. That's right. It's because there are two. You do, but you, that's why you don't exist. Yeah, I, I agree it's a little bit frustrating, this, but the, the trouble is there is really no uh, satisfactory way of saying which thing you would be in that future scenario. Yeah? Is, it, is this? I mean, who would you be? Lefty? Would you go for Lefty? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, the ectoplasm went. But if the ectoplasm went lefty, and or then you'd be lefty, and if the ectoplasm went righty, then you'd be righty. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but remember what the problem always is for our dualism. Yeah. Suppose, so let's be dualist, right? Suppose the ectoplasm fissions. <laughs> it doesn't fission. <laughs> I. <laughs> Sorry. Very good. There are, uh, suppose oh. it, suppose it, that suppose X is male and X is a wife. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> there are going to be a number of practical problems here. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, I think that's a real concern. Um, the thing is, I mean, I don't wish to sound, um, I don't wish to sound like I'm trying to undermine the value of family or something, but um, um, complications about your partner seem to be different to fear of dying. Do, 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 do you see what I mean? Um, it's one thing to say, I don't like this scenario, 
because um, there'll, be, there'll be such a complicated situation with my partner. Um, it's a different thing to say, I don't like this scenario because I'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you see what I mean? The, the dead thing, well, <laughs> I don't want to weigh these against one another really, but the dead thing seems so visceral, right? Yeah. Um, the, yeah. It is the same thing. I see you could say that, but um, I mean, really, if this one hadn't taken, I mean, suppose the way it works is like this. Suppose you're told your you, your body is going through this very difficult regenerative phase, and um, the way it works is sometimes the whole system just breaks down. Sometimes one of the fission products makes it, and sometimes the other fission product makes it. But sometimes, you know, one of them only has um, lasts for a couple of seconds, yeah. Uh, and so after the procedure, um, you wake up, you're lefty, and you're lying in a hospital bed, um, and you're thinking, well, if righty doesn't make it, then I'll be the same as X, yeah, uh, and I'll have survived. Well, let's hope righty doesn't make it. Right, you might go over and pull out Wrighty's plug, right? <laughs> I mean, but that really seems kind of mean. I mean, why not just wish Wrighty the best? Yeah, I mean, apart from this thing about your partner. <laughs> yeah. Right, but what's the X's perspective here? Yeah, well, let me put it with this. From X's perspective, suppose Wrighty didn't make it, right? So X is here, up here on uh, the lefty branch, we've still got X, yeah? Should X really be feeling triumphant because righty didn't make it? No, no, X has made it. If, right, if righty didn't take, yeah, then X has made it. So uh, from X's perspective, could it really be right to be saying, ha, <laughs> I'm so happy about righty not making it. Yeah, I mean, that really seems kind of mean. I mean, why not wish Righty the best? Why not, um, you know, do what you can to get Righty through it? Do you see what I mean? Um, yeah, that's right. I changed the scenario. Yeah, yeah. I can do that. <laughs> um, there was someone else. Uh, yeah, one second. Yeah, um, right. That's, yeah. Still that's still X. That's what I meant by doing that walk, right? Yeah. If I just walk to the left, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why is it that like the perspective of X is more powerful? I'm still confused about that. Like earlier, you said why is it better, more ethical to say like better to start the thing by getting better results in the world? Yes, that's right. That's exactly what I'm arguing right now. Why should I rubber stamp this? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I, I, if you just think, uh, th th there's something that's really right about what you and people earlier were saying. Um, the, the, uh, but the thing that's puzzling here is, is just the logic of identity. If, it's, if you're really talking about identity, then there can at most be one of them. Yeah? So if you've got two here, they can't be identical to each other and so on. Now, you're saying, well, just because you've got branching, why is that such a big deal? Why does that matter? I think that's right, but the reason you'd see why that's right is you'd say, well, what is identity anyway? Identity is when I got these causal connections between earlier and later. And the thing about these causal connections is they can branch. Yeah. So the underlying causal connections can be branching, and that's all just fine. Th that's not, uh, as you're saying, that's not a big deal. Um, but you can't catch it by you talk about identity. Because identity doesn't allow branching. If, if, if you had stayed along in one straight line for so long, and if you were to say that X is no longer doing what you did, like you haven't like like if instead of two shots you had three, and then yeah. both of those ends went directly to a void, 
Yes, right. Oh, yes. So you would have seen this issue. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. Uh, by definition, identity is one to one. Is, is that addressing what you're saying? Oh, oh Tim, you, you want to speak? Yeah, yeah. Informative. Yeah, like the first thing you mentioned. Yeah, All yeah. you mean by lefty is that you think that, well, there's a, there's a psychological and bodily change from, from uh, the left brain to the right brain. Yeah, when you analyze what it is, it's just a psychological and bodily change. And then you say, but I can get that same kind of bi psychological and biological change branching. Yeah, and that's, not, that's fine, but that's not identity. It can't be because it's branching, it's not identity. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. So, like, throughout my lifetime, identity can't be one to one because you can get there's so much, so many facets of your identity and your experience with other people and your that allows for you to come up in other people's identity. Yeah. So why I, I, I strongly agree, and that, 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 that's emphasizing the importance of these causal connections generally, and saying identity is not the key thing. Yeah, I think that's actually agreeing with part of my. Um, yeah. So, so Different identity. Like oh, identity yes. Is like an S -shaped thing. Yeah, that, that yeah. Like yeah. So you may have been powerfully affected. Yeah, I, I, I'm just trying to, to, to stay on, what should I say, the, on the ground of common sense and say, you know, this lecture may have a, uh, affected you powerfully. But you're still the same one in the same person as you are coming into the room. Because that would be a contradiction. Uh -huh. That's exactly the point, right? Um, you've got everything that matters in survival. You've got all the important things here, even though you don't have identity. <laughs> right. Um, well, identity means there's just one person here, but there are two, <laughs> right? I mean, th th yeah, th okay. yeah. Do you think people who Yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's right, and, but you know it can't go to both of them 
and you know that the situation is symmetrical, so there's no justification for saying it's one rather than the other. Uh, okay, I, I, I w we'd been going to um, find out what kind of species people were thinking of for their essays today, um, uh, but discussion just hotted up so much in the last uh, quarter of an hour there that I, I let it run over. Um, w w shall we do that on Tuesday? Um, uh, yeah, because I, th I think that's really interesting hearing what people are up to. Um, and uh, pack it up for today. Is okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. <laughs>